So I want to quickly talk about the assignment. Um, the only one I haven't really spoken to other than in passing in these classes, uh, which is this final essay. Actually, while I think of it here, I will just point out that I've got a Turnitin checker here. I think some of you are aware of it. Um, it's there so that if you wish to do so or you're concerned about it, you can upload your uh, discussion topics and get a Turnitin review in relation to that. But also, um, particularly given that these assignments are being, um, they're due over what is a really busy holiday period and everybody's traveling, um, it, it's not at all uncommon for people to need extensions, but normally what I will do is, because the maximum extension I can give is seven days, is I don't start marking until those seven days are up. But once I start marking, I have to lock down the, uh, the turn it in the area. And that means people who have extensions can't see their turn it in report, which I think is not fair because you only get an extension if you need it, right? And there are usually not that many of them. Um, but particularly this time of year, it's going to happen. But I don't have the luxury because of the time of year of waiting a week. I'm going to have to start marking them straight away. So that means the day after these are due, you won't. If you are late or if you have an extension, you won't be able to check turn it in. But you can use this turn it in checker area to just upload, and it's set up so that it won't store your score because otherwise you would then upload it again and get 100%, right? So, or depending on what you change, you might get 98% or something or other, and that would be bad. So that's what it's for. Um, it means the only way I can do it is by making it an assessment task because of the way our licensing works for Turnitin. That's the only way that you can use it. Um, so that means if you haven't seen it done this way before, in your assessment task, it might show, especially once I'm finished, so when I'm processing the mark, it might show you get a zero or an incomplete. Um, that's because I'll just default mark them. If you are zero or incomplete for a Turnitin checker, you're golden, right? Do not worry about it. You do not need to call me. Do not press whatever I am on your speed dial. Yeah. It's fine. It's all good. Um, but you know, if you just want to say hello, that's fine. Um, so let's. Um, I am looking at the screen over there and I literally cannot see a thing. It's because my eyesight is not that good. Um, in fact, I'm going to try and remember where this thing is. Um, can somebody tell me, is that the Zoom? Yeah. Because yeah. Um, I'm thinking if I can't see it, other people can't either. Let's just have a quick look. Oh, that's better. I can now read it. Okay, so this is your main assignment. When I say it's your main assignment, it's the single biggest weighted task that you have. You have a lot of time to do it. See, 20th of January. Okay, so I'm very happy if you submit it early. I will not start marking them until the 20th of January because I've learnt that lesson the hard way, go and spend all that time marking and feedback and then somebody puts it in, you know, overwrites it again. Um, that's okay. So what is your topic? You are required to critically evaluate the ways in which the law seeks to protect minority investors in the context of change of control transactions and evaluate the effectiveness of the rules and their impact on the way that transactions are conducted in Australia. It is purposefully vague. I am very happy for you to, and in fact, I recommend that you pick a specific type of change of control transaction and explore relevant rules in relation to that. A typical type of transaction could be, you can look at it in the context of initial public offerings or other kinds of share issue transactions where clearly control is affected. Um, at the early stage. You can look at it in the context of takeovers, which is what we've been discussing today. You can look at it in the context of share and business uh, transfers. You might want to do it as a comparative analysis. You might want to look at how the rules and the, uh, the, uh, the processes and 
the conventions in the way that we do private transactions, how they do or do not overlap with public transactions and the extent to which that goes to that question of uh, the minority or not. If you are concerned about the avenue that you are taking or if there's just something that we've touched upon as we've been going that is of particular interest to you that may not even be particularly uh, uh, close to that transaction, uh, sorry, that uh, essay topic, I am happy to negotiate an alternative essay topic with you. Do not write one without me getting my uh, without getting my approval for it first, because all I will be doing is making sure that your topic is sufficient to address the criteria in the rubric. That means that I can actually sign off that you've achieved the learning outcomes that we need to achieve for the topic. Now, one of the reasons why I'm happy to, for you to do a deep and narrow dive here, and in fact, I suggest you do because you can show off a lot more when you go deep and narrow for this kind of essay work, is because across with that 40% assignment task is broken up into four separate tasks, and I know that they are onerous and each of them focuses on a slightly different area. Um, and there is a common playing field there because topic four is, I think that's the one from memory, all of you will have to do the same discussion task for that one. You have less choice there. So I've got a common moderating um, uh, assessment task there as well. And so it doesn't, you can do what interests you because frankly I am much more interested in you learning something than reading the same essay over and over again. I am also very happy for you to explore these ideas across different areas. Why do I suggest that you think about something different or something that interests you? Genuinely, people who are interested in what they're writing write more interesting things. And I know I make it sound like this is all about me, but, but I'm going to read a lot of essays and it can be, you know, quite frankly, some of them can be a little bit boring. Um, <laughs> I mean, and if you're bored writing them, I'm really bored reading them. So pick something you're interested in doing and share your opinion about it. Now, the, this is a critical analysis task. You are asked to critically evaluate, to evaluate effectiveness. And any other negotiated topic is going to require you to critically evaluate. In order to do this, I'm trying to do this in student view, so I can't see where the rubric is. Okay, rubric is down here. I'm pretty sure there's a printable version of it. But you can see that the criteria are, in relation to style and citation, uh, why does that sit like that? It's just sitting in this really funny way, isn't it? Um, I'm just trying to, oh, okay, that'll tell me. So 20% goes to the way that you write, okay? So when I'm actually doing the assessment, I will be looking at, are you using the right terms? Are you using them consistently? Are you using the English language with actual verbs in every sentences and ideas in that are separated out into different paragraphs and headings that make sense? Have you structured it in an order that makes sense? Um, if you use diagrams, did they add to the way that I understood what was going on? Uh, or is it a diagram like the one that was just confusing earlier on today? Also, is an appropriate tone for your audience? I know you see these things every time, but you've got a different audience in each of these. So in the task that you are probably going to complete beforehand, uh, the second assessment task, you are writing for two different audiences. You are writing for another lawyer, and you are writing for a non-lawyer client. The voice and the tone that you use in those will be different. Just to make it awesome for you so you don't miss out on anything, this is an academic essay, right? So you're writing for an academic audience, okay? Normally I would be saying, and I would still encourage you to think about using active language uh, rather than passive language, but in an academic context, I'm, kind of, I'm gonna be less strict about that in a sense because often what we want to do in an academic context is put the research ahead of the researcher. 
Uh, so what we're doing is we tend to use passive language when we're trying to put the researcher or the writer into the background. At the same time, using active language, being clear, short paragraphs, short sentences, trying to map out your ideas, indenting across as you have subsections or sub-ideas, all of that aids your reader to understand your point. And whilst that's only 20% of the overall, there is often, and because I am a geek, I have mapped it out with Excel, there is often a correlation between poor writing structure skills and poor discussion content and insights. And or that better writing skills would help lift the ideas. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I like giving people good marks. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I've taught you something. Um, and I know that it means less of you ringing me up and telling me why I'm wrong later on. Um, so, <laughs> people, people to, hey, I, that's why I have children as well. You know, I do. I have children who can tell me I'm wrong. I don't need you guys to do it. Um, but, and sometimes I am wrong. And this has happened that I had uh, on more than one occasion. I have missed a nuanced or interesting argument because it's been presented in a way that it's gotten lost. Um, because I am reading a lot of them, and I'm, I really, I de genuinely, I do try very hard to read them carefully, uh, and to, and you know, that's many of you have seen. I'll scribble all over things when the technology allows me to do that because I'm actively reading them. But when it is structured in a way that makes if you're hiding if you're hiding the diamonds right in the base of the coal mine, I might not see it. So and this is the same with any kind of writing. Make your clear point up front. So think about things like what is the main point? Your words are like dollars here. Invest more in what's important and less in what is less important. Because if you spend three pages writing about X, I am going to think that you think X is more important than Y. So think about how structure impacts. So across the rubric you'll see uh, there's a description, and, and this happens in everything now where the assessment value is over 10%. You'll see what each of these looks like. Just as an aside, I haven't done this for your discussion board tasks because they're only worth 10% and they're supposed to be different from each other. So the more that, um, frankly, I think sometimes we can go overboard in this stuff and we're being too prescriptive because something that is awesome I might not know what awesome looks like yet. Um, and something that is a pass or a fail, it, it's unlikely to have all of these things wrong with it. There'll be one specific thing and it might even be a different thing from those things. Um, and so that's why in the discussion task, those of you have had them marked already and I've marked everybody I think that didn't have an extension up that wasn't before or last Thursday or Wednesday I think I I got them all done to last Wednesday I can't remember but you will have seen that I've just put a text comment in after each criteria and that's all I'm going to do for the um, uh, for the discussion task one but if you need more guidance in relation to any of those I'm really not easy to find so just unless you're complaining about me then I hide a bit because uh, so 20% on the way you write and the balance, oh no, it's not the balance, it's actually 35% on the research you've done. So here, I am looking to see that you've made independent inquiries. Now research here, depending on which area you dive into, it might be guidance notes from ASIC, it might be takeover panels, discussions, it might be many, many cases, particularly if you're looking at takeovers or the IPOs in particular because you will have a lot of regulated transactions there. If you are looking at a pro, uh, this question in the context of private transactions, we've got less regulation clearly. We've got uh, less cases and more um, convention, uh, more guidance, more example transactions that you can draw on. Now I'm always going to be looking for a good weighting between primary and secondary sources. 
But in this context, what I'm looking for is your opinion, which is the vast basis of this, your discussion, the contents and insight. So where research helps is you demonstrating to me that your opinion hasn't come from what I like to call the Paduma Institute, picked it directly out of my something starting with A. What I want to know is that, you know, and I am the chairman of the institute, let me tell you, so we can we can deal with that. What I am looking for here is that you have thought about how this works and you've made inquiries to find out what other people think or what has happened with the judgments. You've used that to inform your opinion. If you disagree, best case scenario, guys, is to disagree intelligently with other sources because that gives you the ability to contrast, compare, to explain what it is that you think and why. If you do that, demonstrating to me that you have taken into account the opinions of others, that's awesome. If you don't don't disagree for the sake of disagreeing, you're not five, um, it's a good result if you get there. If you don't, if you agree with others, it only adds credibility to your arguments and your insights if you give examples, if you can point to other people who you agree with. Um, and again, you know, all of you are along the way in your degree process, you know about academic integrity, but from my point of view, it's beyond academic integrity here. It's demonstrating to your reader that you've gone to a sensible source, you've thought about what they have to say, and you have an opinion of your own because ultimately the high distinctions come from this area. Your, the content and the insight, so the extent to which you've clearly articula articulated what the issues are, what the law is, you've applied legal reasoning. The way that you've structured and presented your arguments goes to this. Even though that's really part of your writing, it, they're absolutely intimately involved with each other. The extent to which your consideration of the issues incorporates a critical assessment of the legal issues and implies insight into uh, appropriate, uh, sorry, insight appropriate to the issues under consideration. So my last point, and I, I, I'm hoping I am making it pretty short here, is think about what your recommendations are. Reach a conclusion. Your conclusion should follow from earlier arguments. If the first time I have any idea where you're going with this is when I'm reading the last paragraph, then you haven't done a good job of it. I need to see logically where you're heading. So, you know, in the typical style, Intr often it's good advice to write your introduction last. So tell me what you're going to say, say it, tell me what you said. The conclusion, I should be pretty clear on what your recommendation or conclusions are from reading the first paragraph in an ideal world. Um, so I, I don't want to say anything new in the conclusion. If your conclusion, recommendation, your insight is the law should be changed, that's awesome, but don't stop there. Because changing the law is not an easy thing, particularly if we're talking about changing a federal law with the government that we have right now, uh, where it is very difficult to get bipartisan support on anything, um, that we have lots of different moving parts. To get regulation changed in any way is a very difficult thing. And courts can only make law based on the cases that are put before them. So stopping with the law should be changed, look, it might get you, depending on what the rest is, I'm not going to say you won't do well with that, but just as a recommendation, don't leave me hanging, okay? I, I like to know, did the butler do it? Not only should the law be changed, but how should it be changed and, and how do you actually see that happening? What would be involved in that? Um, and yeah, and, and students can in particular think it, we end up with, oh, we should change the law, but it's in practice, that's not an easy outcome. Um, questions, concerns, frustrations, 
compliments? Any excitement about this? Uh, yeah. Because um, we're doing this over Christmas New Year period for that period, so hopefully people can do this so we'll have a good time and also find pockets of time so they can devote to it. I would. Oh, sorry. I just. I was just going to give you a little advice before you went on. You. Go on. Uh, um, just wondering if we find some great opportunities to get the assignments done, get all of the assignments done, so before the end of December. That was not where I thought you were going. We can upload them. Is it possible to re-upload easily? Yeah. So once you. This is how I learnt the hard way not to start marking early, um, is that at any time up to the due date, you can re-upload as many times as you like. Um, your Turnitin score won't be affected by previous uploads in the same place. It'll only go down if you, or up if you've amended, depending on which way you've amended. Um, but you can keep doing that as many times as you like. Um, I would actually suggest if you think you can get it done and you get it up there, then it's there. And if you have extra time to fret and worry about it later, good. But otherwise, happy new year to you if you can get it in there. Mm. What I thought you were going to say is it, what I was, uh, where I thought you were going is it can be a really difficult time and unexpected circumstances can arise over the Christmas and New Year period. My advice to all of you as lawyers would be, if you are going to need to ask for more time for any of the assignments, please ask for that time in a way that corresponds with the policy. The policy is available online uh, and so basically putting me on notice, I forgot about it or I'm getting married on Tuesday, um, I, some of these things I have had in the past, they are not unexpected circumstances outside of your control. So all I want to say is the grounds for an extension require that circumstances are outside of your control. So a pre-planned wedding, Christmas, <laughs> uh, we know Christmas is coming. It comes the same day every year. Like we, we don't allow, it's specifically written into the policy that we are not allowed to uh, put in extensions for Ramadan and that moves all over the place. So as does Easter, we cannot give you extensions for those things. But, you know, unexpected things outside of your control, you know, suddenly a lot of people you didn't invite turning up for a party, those things, you know, think it, think it through, guys, is what I'm saying. You're lawyers for crying out loud. Just think it through. Don't put me on the spot. Because, look, at the end of the day, it is a crazy time of year and I get it. I've realised just today that I now have the luxury because I'm not allowed to release feedback or results to you until the end, until results are officially released on the third assignment, which means I've got way more time than I normally do to mark them because we're supposed to have them back to you within 14 days of the submission date, which given usually you can't start marking them until seven days after the submission date anyway, is actually quite hard work for us. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got a longer time. Like I said, I'm, I won't be unreasonable about it, but think about it too. With something due on the 22nd, the maximum I can give you is to the 29th if you need additional time. And my guess is for most of us, um, the 22nd and the 29th are equally undoable. Un and I don't mean undoable in yeah, the sense of undo or not. I mean it as in difficult. But you're all in the same boat. And, hey, it's a really fun assignment, that middle one. I think you're just going to have such a good time. You'll be saying to other people, sorry, I would prefer to be doing my assignment than going to your barbecue. <laughs> okay, is that really wishful thinking? We'll Please. I would like to see that as a hashtag on Twitter. <laughs> Any other questions, concerns, frustrations? Yeah, I know there are a lot of assignment tasks for this subject. Um, and yeah, it is hard work doing it over Christmas, but um, in less than two hours, there will be no more teaching. <laughs>